key light, check. Brim light, check. Backlight, check. RGBs, check, check, check. Microphone, check. Dog bed, check. Dog, check. One laughable Sony Alpha rumors post, check. Now we can begin. Now the room in question is to do with a new high resolution version of the A9 to be released early next year. The reason why I think this was so amusing wasn't really anything to do with the camera. It's the fact that two days beforehand, Sony Alpha Rumors had posted the same rumor calling it bullshit. In big capital letters, bullshit. And then what, two days later, they posted the same rumor saying, uh, actually, we've had some more information from other sources, all saying the same sort of thing, so actually it might be true. But is the camera actually going to make an appearance or not? Because if such a camera were to exist, it kind of doesn't make much sense, I don't think. So the rumor is that it's a new A9, but it's going to be packed with a 50 megapixel sensor and is going to be able to shoot 8K up to 30p with no overheating. A burn on Canon. Well, actually, it's a burn on the hands of the R5 users who have to hold the damn thing. But yeah, I digress. So it's speculated that this camera is going to be essentially Sony's answer to the R5, which seems peculiar because the R5 was Canon's answer to the A7R4. Now, the first query of regarding the A9 specs is the naming. They said they don't know whether it's going to be called the A9S or the A9 III. My money would actually be on an A9R. I'm going to make that prediction. It would be completely illogical to call it the A9S because that would just be very confusing to say, oh yes, the S in the A7s is low resolution, but S in A9s is high resolution. And I'll say that they're not going to call it the A9 III because it doesn't seem like a logical successor to the A9 II. But honestly, the whole camera doesn't seem logical in my mind. Because whenever I see people praising the A9 and the A9 II, it's always the same sort of areas that get mentioned. Namely, the really fast performance in terms of not just shooting 20 frames a second, but how fast, how well it can sustain that shooting speed, even when the autofocus is going crazy. Two, the autofocus performance itself. And three, the ability to shoot silent with little to no rolling shutter, which is a big aspect for photojournalists and some sports photographers. Like, it's so annoying trying to listen to like a press conference and all you can hear is as 101 DSLRs from the press pit have got mirrors and shutters flying all over the place. Whereas with the A9s, you can just go full electronic and make no noise whatsoever. And I think having a 50 megapixel sensor is going to detract a lot of those prospects from the A9 series. I mean, yes, the R5 can shoot 45 megapixel uh, stills up to 20 frames a second in electronic shutter. Except, because of all that additional information within the files, it presents a couple of problems. Firstly, there's more information for the camera to try and process whilst it's trying to deal with the autofocus and everything else as well. So the camera's more inclined to start slowing the camera down at times to try and keep up with everything. And rolling shutters, of course, because the camera's trying to read from the top of the sensor line by line all the way down to the bottom. And anything that moves whilst the camera is doing that reading is going to appear distorted because it's appearing on different parts of the sensor at different times. Now, the A9 has such a fast readout speed on its 20 megapixel sensor that it's able to get through that faster than most things can move. But the more lines that you add in and the more pixels you add on each line, the longer it's going to take the camera to read all that information. So at 50 megapixels, I would be surprised if the camera didn't have rolling shutter and banding, unless they're planning on introducing a global shutter. 
But even then, is 50 megapixels actually necessary? Because again, I've seen a lot of people praise the A9s for the aspects that we've just mentioned. I've never heard any of them complaining that 20 megapixels just isn't sufficient. Arguably, apart from maybe wildlife photographers that want to crop in heavily, but I imagine for most of those, the likes of the A7R4 is more than adequate. But sports photographers care less about resolution and more about sustained speed. They've probably not much interest in a 50 megapixel picture if it's out of focus because the camera wasn't able to keep up with whatever subjects they're trying to shoot. And again, the video aspects seems like a bit of a gimmick. I mean, I've not seen many sports and photojournalist shooters clawing to get at the R5. I mean, admittedly, not many press photographers would claw for Canon anyway because Associated Press has signed an agreement to only use Sony cameras. Now, I know it's an Olympic year next year. It should have been Olympics this year, but obviously some things that shall not be named got in the way of that. So next year is an Olympic year, which is part of the validation for this new A9 coming to fruition that it's an Olympic year. And yes, let's be honest, as I said in a recent video, the A9 Mark II release wasn't that much of an improvement over the A9. It was a bit of a wet flannel. But this doesn't seem like an upgrade to the A9. It looks like a complete diversion onto a different track altogether. I mean, from my personal take on it, if there was going to be a new A9 next year, I think it would look better, it would be better, would be better suited to more people if it wasn't some ridiculously high resolution like offspring of the A9 but was a genuine successor to the A9 II. You know, maybe a little bit of an increase in resolution, but doesn't really need much more than that, and focus more on other aspects, like really high resolution EVF and touchscreen and all the newer features of the ergonomics of the camera that we're seeing in the A7S III go nuts with them by all means. But I would imagine a majority of current A9 users would be more interested in not seeing a huge bump in resolution, but instead going nuts and seeing an even faster bump in speed. Like, let's hit 30 frames a second, for example. I mean, I was going to say maybe it's a quad bayer, and that's why it's such a high resolution, but then that wouldn't be a high enough resolution because at a 50 megapixel quad bayer, you're effectively only shooting about 12 and a half megapixels. So I don't know. And even the, the prospect of shooting 8K at 30p. Again, most people deem that the 8K shooting of the R5 is a gimmick. I mean, admittedly, partly that might be because it only shoots for like 35 seconds at a time. But the general market that the A9's focused at haven't really seen that bothered about the R5. I mean, I might be entirely wrong on all this. Let's be honest, it wouldn't be the first time. But I just don't see that much demand from A9 shooters for a higher resolution A9. And the Sony shooters that do want high resolution seem to be perfectly happy with the A7R4. Unless they've got some monstrous new processing unit, and I don't mean the uh, XR from the A7S III, I mean a new processor that would make that look like a typewriter, then I think up in the resolution, especially by two and a half times the current resolutions, is going to impact on the areas where the A9 currently excels. But I'm no doubt in six months we're going to be back here talking about how wrong I was and going through the specs of the newly announced A9 high resolution camera, probably called the A9S. But what do you guys make of the rumour? Do you reckon it's uh, likely to happen? Do you think it's complete tosh? And if it is going to happen, what do you think the specs would be? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below while you're down there. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like, the subscribe button and consider checking out my Patreon account. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully... I will see you in the next video.